Still no arrests in a quadruple shooting that killed three men in northwest Baltimore. Community members voicing their frustrations to the mayor and police commissioner about how they're handling the violence in the city. Governor Larry Hogan is expected to sign the suspension bill for the gas state tax. Coming up, I'll tell you exactly what needs to happen before it can get to his desk. I'm John Mattery, saving money at warehouse stores. With gas prices so high, how much can they really save you? That story coming up. You're watching the station that's working for you, WMAR 2 News. Now, good morning, Maryland. Time now is 6 o'clock on this Friday morning. It's March 18th. Good morning, Maryland. I'm Megan Knight. Christian is off this week, and there are two school delays to let you know about this morning, both on the eastern shore. We have Kent and Queen, An Queen Anne's County Public Schools starting 90 minutes late today due to the fog, so there's not going to be any morning pre-K in Queen Anne's County. Now, Kent County Schools, they were set to dismiss early today, so those times are going to be delayed by 30 minutes. So now middle and high school students will be let out at noon, and dismissal for elementary schools is at 1.15. We have all this information posted on our website as well. So let's go check in with Chief Meteorologist Lynette Charles because, man, that fog is thick out there this morning. It is thick, and that's why we do have the dense fog advisories that go until 10 o'clock this morning. So we'll be aware of that. You can see the visibility and numbers at this point not looking good around the eastern shore, around Talbot County. You can see zero and we're seeing that back off towards Caroline County as well. And then the inner harbor. Yeah, not looking good there as we do have a zero visibility and we're going to continue to monitor these numbers. We'll see how these finally uh, look as we go towards about nine o'clock. Remember that uh, dense fog advisory expires at 10 o'clock, but even after 10, we can still be dealing with a little bit of patchy fog still lingering, but improving conditions. That's going to be the name of the game. The temperatures this morning, 50 degrees right now in Westminster. We're at 39 in Thermont this morning. It's 45 in Elkton. 49 in Chestertown. So these temperatures are above the average of about 34 degrees now. With that said, that light jacket definitely will suffice as you step out the door. Uh, you don't want to put too many layers on because you'll be taking all those layers off as you go into the afternoon. So the kids at the bus stop this morning will have to deal with that patchy dense fog. Coming home today won't be dealing with that. Be dealing with plenty of sunshine across the area and temperatures that will be in the low 70s. So this is going to be turning out to be a lovely day. Liz, we just have to get rid of that fog. Yeah, we got to get through it. And this morning you have to drive through it. It's awfully dense in spots. You've got the uh, schools that are affected by it over on the eastern shore. But let me start where there's a complication as you head into the city, non fog related. It's construction. It crops up and it's crowding the ramp from northbound 295 to take you to I-95. So that uh, big blur of flashing lights, that is the construction itself. Now, let me take you to a disabled vehicle. It's going to get your attention on the ramp from uh, the inner loop to take Frederick Road, so it shouldn't be in the main lanes itself. Now, here's a glimpse of the fog and just how lowered your visibility really is. This is the top side of the Beltway in Towson. The uh, car is coming towards you. That's the inner loop through those Towson exits. That's your time saver traffic. Megan, over to you. Thank you very much, Liz. Well, still no arrest this morning in connection to the quadruple shooting in northwest Baltimore, where three men were killed over the weekend. People who live in the Howard Park community where that shooting happened held a meeting last night to talk about the violence throughout the city. Police Commissioner Michael Harrison, along with Mayor Brandon Scott, were both in attendance. Those who spoke at the meeting say they feel that their needs and requests are being ignored. For over 15 years, six mayors, I can't count how many police commissions that we've had. It still exists. So it's not like it's one area. We live in this community together. You're not safe from one end to the next. Now there is an $8,000 reward for information leading to an arrest in that quadruple shooting. Well, it's been four months since a 13 year old girl was murdered in West Baltimore. And as of this morning, there's still no arrests in that case. Family and friends of Malia Turner plan to hold a rally in her memory at 5 o'clock tonight at the Lillian Jones Rec Center. Turner was shot near that rec center back in November on Pressman and North Stricker Streets. There's now a $21,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest. Also today, the area where a Baltimore City police officer was shot and killed in the line of duty will be named in her honor. It was back in December that Officer Kiana Holly was on patrol in the Curtis Bay neighborhood. She was ambushed in her patrol car at Pennington Avenue and Hazel Street. Holly died at shock trauma a week later. The ceremony to name that section Kiana Holly Way is scheduled for 1 o'clock this afternoon.
It is 603 and gas prices are continuing to drop slightly this morning. AAA reporting the national average is now at $4.27, which is a cent cheaper than it was yesterday. In Maryland, the average cost of gas is now at $4.16, which is 14 cents down from a week ago, but that is still 60 more cents than we were paying last month. And relief could soon be on the way. Coming from Annapolis, the House and State Senate there unanimously passed a bill to suspend the state's gas tax for 30 days, which would save drivers up to 36 cents a gallon. WMAR 2 News' Aaron McPherson is here now with where things stand with this bill. So, Aaron, do we know when the governor could sign this? Well, Megan, we are trying to figure that out right now because there are a few things that need to happen before it actually goes to the governor's desk. The House and the Senate have to sign off on their versions of each other's versions of the bill before it can go to the governor's desk. Now, the expectation as of right now is that he will sign the bill today and relief for drivers will come shortly after. Now, lawmakers were back and forth about when the bill will actually go into effect, wondering if there should be a couple day grace period to make sure there's equity among businesses and no perception of price gouging as gas stations lower their per gallon cost. The expectation as of now is that drivers will see the state gas tax suspension as soon as the governor signs the bill. Now, one of the lawmakers concerns about passing the bill was the impact it would have on Maryland's transportation industry, leaving less of an investment in the infrastructure, but that's been figured out. We had a, a surplus of a billion and a half dollars last Thursday. We found out this $100 million forecasted over a 30-day period, so an opportunity to kind of put money back in, not messing with the Transportation Trust Fund, but it's extra resources to put taxpayers' dollars back in Marylanders, our friends, our family, our neighbors. The state gas tax suspension will be in place for 30 days. Governor Larry Hogan said he wanted it to be longer than that, but that's where they landed with the compromise agreement. Now, lawmakers explained if they if there is a budget that can allow for it to extend, that is something that they will consider. But as of right now, that suspension will be in place for 30 days. Now, live here in Towson, Aaron McPherson, WMAR 2 News. All right, we'll be keeping an eye on that. Thank you, Aaron. Well, people will do just about anything to save money on gas, even crossing borders for cheaper prices. There's a small town in Washington state called Point Roberts that sits right near the Canadian border. Its gas prices are about 50 cents a gallon cheaper in there so, uh, than the people who live in Canada. So the town is seeing an influx of Canadian drivers that are heading south to fill up their tanks. Well, inflation has some people changing their eating habits, whether it's what they buy at the grocery store or if they decide to dine out at their favorite restaurant. Restaurant owners have to not only adapt to their customers' tighter budgets, but also the rising costs of doing business. WMAR 2 News' Mark Roper is live outside of Jimmy's Seafood in southeast Baltimore. So, Mark, the price of Maryland crab is expected to go up this season. How are the people at Jimmy's Seafood going to be managing those higher costs? Yeah, good morning, Megan. You know, just as many people are making adjustments in their own personal budgets and spending, the people here at Jimmy's Famous Seafood, they're also always looking for deals with their vendors as well as making changes to their menu so they can still offer their customer a variety of things no matter what the market price of crab is. Eating at Jimmy's Famous Seafood is a tradition for many families, whether they come from Dundalk, Baltimore City, or even San Diego, California, like Gary Allen. Every time we come out here, we make it a point to come down here and, and eat. And when in Maryland, whether it's crab cakes or crab legs, people come to eat crab. The wholesale price of crab is expected to go up for restaurant owners like Jimmy's Famous Seafood's John Minadakis. But unlike other products impacted directly by inflation, there are additional factors which could affect the cost of crab. We've heard it all. We've heard it from, you know, Russia uh, to people not being willing to work. Uh, to not having a great catch out on the water, to not having uh, visas. It's, we, you know, we've heard every excuse, but nobody really seems to be able to answer it directly. We just uh, have to pay what they tell us to pay and uh, make adjustments. The Chesapeake Bay Seafood Industries Association blames a labor shortage of about 500 to 600 crab pickers because of a limit on H-2B visas. 
Experts warn without those workers, it could cause a 90% drop in production and a big jump in price this crab season. Governor Larry Hogan has urged Maryland's congressional delegation to raise the cap on H-2B guest worker visas. Meanwhile, the executive director of the Chesapeake Bay Seafood Industries Association says it's too difficult to tell how high prices could go this year, but believes buyers will pay a premium for Maryland blue crab if they can get it. It's just part of the game. Uh, you know, and, you know, today it's crab meat, next week it'll be lobster, and the week after that it'll be beer bottles. You never know, but you know, you just got to survive and adapt. Because in Maryland, people still want their crab. So if you only have 20 bucks to spend on lunch, you know, we make a uh, crab cake slider, for example, instead of, you know, the full crab cake. You know, we lower prices of certain alcohols. To, so you're still, if you have 30 bucks for lunch, you're still going to be able to have what you want to have. Minidakis recognizes his customers might be making some adjustments of their own as the market price of crab goes up. We're very fortunate to have a very passionate and loyal fan base. And, you know, maybe sometimes instead of coming here four times a month, they're coming three times a month. But uh, they're still making it a point to support not only us, but small businesses throughout the state. Such as this healthcare worker who isn't bothered by the threat of rising prices. I don't have time to wait till I get home to grab a sandwich or, you know, we try to unpack a lunch in the car. So when we're going from facility to facility and making sure that patients are getting coordinated for home, this is the last thing I'm worried about is that cost. But what I do like is that I can crab in the Severn River with a chicken neck and a string and get my own crabs if I need to. Now, experts tell us they expect the demand for crab to be high this season, but Economics 101 tells us that, you know, if the demand is high but the supply is still low, that still means rising prices for restaurant owners and their customers. Reporting live in southeast Baltimore, Mark Roper, WMAR 2 News. All right, Mark, and yeah, Maryland crab season does start in April, so isn't Maryland crab cheaper than, say, getting it from southern states or even other countries? Yeah, you would think with crab season just being around the corner that we could be looking for some lower prices. But again, it comes back to supply and demand. So, yes, they can get that crab from other parts of the country. But Maryland crab is cheaper because they don't have to pay to ship it. And they also it's fresher because, you know, they don't lose that time in shipping. But if they don't have those workers. It still comes back to supply and demand, which still means higher prices for all of us who love crab. Yeah, that's going to hurt. All right. Thank you very much, Mark. Well, some people are buying in bulk to try to save a little money. As consumer reporter John Matteris found out, buying in bulk can actually lead to real problems. He explains so you don't waste your money. So if you have a family to feed, Sam's is definitely the place to be. I buy things like the water, paper towel, toilet paper, things like that, and it's a lot cheaper here. Tracy Reese likes to buy in bulk. She says she comparison shops and ends up saving money. Brittany Downing is a mom of five. She says she saves big bucks on cereal. I can get um, two bags of cereal here at Sam's for about six bucks and one box at Kroger's for a family size is probably six dollars. But is she really saving money in the long run? We talked to marketing expert Kelly Goldsmith. That space that takes up in your house effectively costs you money because you can't put anything else there. So think it through. Do you actually have the space to accommodate 48 rolls of toilet paper, or is it going to be piled up in the corner and really annoying you all the time? Toilet paper is one thing, but what about perishable items? But if you look at things like meat, cheese, these are items where you really can save money buying in bulk, but if half of it ends up in the trash can, you're not saving any money at all. Now, sure, if you're buying perishables, you'll probably need a larger freezer or refrigerator, but don't let that scare you because there are so many things that you could buy that just require a little bit of closet space. Kelly says ultimately, when it comes to shopping, the Internet can be your best friend. Do that comparison shopping across websites. It's super easy in this day and age, and make sure you're getting the best deal for you. And that way you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris. Well, for the first time since the pandemic began, students graduating from medical school at the University of Maryland can celebrate with each other in person. We'll have details on that. And later today, the Orioles begin their season, their spring training season in Florida. But if you're going to a game at Camden Yards this year, they'll have some other options when it comes to food at the ballpark. Download the WMAR2 News app. Search WMAR in your app store.
Welcome back. It is 615 and we have more school delays to let you know about this morning. Talbot County Public Schools on the Eastern Shore. They will now be opening two hours late today because of the fog. Now they were supposed to dismiss early today, so now they'll be letting students out at their normal dismissal times. Kent and Queen Anne's County Public Schools. They'll be starting 90 minutes late today. There will be no morning pre K in Queen Anne's County. Kent County Schools, they were also set to dismiss early today, so those times are now being delayed by 30 minutes. So now middle and high school students will be let out at noon and dismissal for elementary schools is at 1:15. We have all this information posted on our website at WMAR2news.com. Well, a man accused of murdering three people in Howard and Allegheny counties is found incompetent to stand trial, at least in Western Maryland. A judge issued the ruling for Jeffrey Allen Burnham, citing a mental disorder. Burnham was ordered to be committed to the Maryland Department of Health. He faces one count of first degree murder in Allegheny County in connection to the murder of 83 year old Rebecca Reynolds. Investigators say that Burnham murdered her, then stole her car to drive to Ellicott City, where they say he killed his brother and sister in law, Brian and Kelly Robinette. Charging documents say that Brian was a pharmacist and that Burnham had told their mother he believed his brother was, quote, poisoning people with the COVID-19 vaccine. Burnham is scheduled for a competency hearing in Howard County later this month. Well, family needs your help in finding a 10 year old boy. Quinn Andre Pitts Jones was last seen last night around 8 o'clock on Luzerne Avenue in East Baltimore. That's right near Patterson Park. Police say the boy got startled and ran out of his home, so please call Baltimore Police if you see him. A new study released by Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health found that a majority of public health departments have been targets of harassment. The study found nearly 1,500 unique reports of harassment, as well as more than half of local health departments uh, were harassed within the first year of the pandemic. In that same time frame, more than 200 public health officials left their jobs, one third of them saying that they had experienced some kind of harassment. Well, for the first time since the pandemic began, the University of Maryland School of Medicine will be holding its match day in person. Match day is the day when the National Resident Matching Program reveals where graduating med school students will begin their careers as doctors. The University of Maryland's match day is going to be held at the Meyerhoff in Baltimore. And that cargo ship that ran aground in the Chesapeake Bay earlier this week, well, it is still stuck in the bay and it doesn't look like it's going to be moving anytime soon. The ship, ironically called Ever Forward, is sitting off the coast of Gibson Island right now. It left the port of Baltimore on Sunday. It was bound for Norfolk, Virginia. Evergreen is the company that operates the ship. They say it's not leaking any fuel into the bay and its propeller and rudder are fully functional. So still working to get that uh, vessel up and running again. Not clear though on how long that's going to take. Hopefully the weekend's weather, Lynette, won't impede them in trying to get that big old ship moving once again. I know I'm with you, Megan Knight. We do have some thunderstorms that will be moving in as we go into your tomorrow. But for today, oh yeah, it's going to be nice and quiet. We just have to get rid of this fog and it's dense in spots this morning. So we're looking at zero the inner harbor, more of the same over in Easton this morning and even around Annapolis. So we are looking at reduced vis visibility about a quarter mile or less in a lot of spots this morning. And because of that, we do have this dense fog advisory at first this morning. It was uh, mainly the western shore, but now we have it across the eastern shore, and that's why they've been dealing with some delays there this morning. This goes until about 10 o'clock this morning. So the tips for driving in the fog, you hear me talk about reducing your speed. You hear about me talking about putting the low beams on instead of the high beams and also put plenty of distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. The satellite and radar is going to be pretty quiet for today on both parts, the satellite and the radar, so no clouds really happening across the area, and also we are going to be dealing with uh, some dry conditions because we're not going to be dealing with all those clouds out there for today. So it is going to be a nice day as the system stays back off towards the west, but that is going to be our weather as we head into tomorrow. So this evening set up this uh, system will continue to get closer to us and we are going to have the showers and thunderstorms and some of those could be on the strong to severe side. Right now, though, we are definitely ahead of that cold front and that's why those temperatures are going to warm up coming out of the south. That southerly flow is really going to bump those temperatures up into the 70s. 
70s before it's all said and done for today. Temperature wise right now, numbers are in the 30s back across the mountains, close to 40 degrees there in Deep Creek. Good morning to you. We're looking at 44 degrees in Ellicott City, Manchester, also Jarrettsville. Good morning to all of you. The bottom line, all these temperatures this morning are above average. We should be about 34 degrees now for this time of the year. 34 sounds so cold, but we're not even close to that and we're headed to the 70s. So that is some good news. Hopefully that puts a big smile on your face. I know it does mine. Then we head to Saturday. So Saturday morning, all you joggers out there, if you plan on jogging, walking the dog around five o'clock in the morning. Well, we do have some spotty showers mainly across the eastern shore. We could see a few spotty showers in Hartford County, but that's not the uh, main action. The main action is going to be coming as we head more towards the evening as we do have some thunderstorms possible. Now we're going to be in between the most of the energy will stay north or stay to the south of us and south. That's where we do have the potential for maybe a spin up of a tornado, uh, but the bulk of the action what we'll see comes in the form of possibly some small hail but damaging wind and because of that the storm prediction center SPC does have us in a marginal risk on a scale of one to five that is a one so it is the lowest risk but the bottom line is that we do have that risk so just uh, stay weather aware as we head into your tomorrow spring is near it's going to be here as we go into Sunday so you have tomorrow the severe weather you have Sunday spring nice and calm temperature right around 61 degrees we will have that nice mix of sun and clouds out there look at the temperatures. So today 74 76 as we head towards Saturday 61 on Sunday and then temperatures rebound nicely go right back up as we head into Monday with plenty of sunshine in the forecast. Still plenty of sunshine as we head towards your Tuesday mixing with clouds and then Wednesday Thursday Liz that's when we get cooler and we also do have the chance for a few spotty showers. Lynette, good morning and thank you. I want to start off by showing you the fog. It is dense. You've got the dense fog advisory that Lynette has been talking about and that impacts your commute. It will uh, reduce your visibility and perhaps limit your speed. So here's a look at, at just how foggy it is. Those cars heading away from you that is southbound on the Jones Falls Expressway heading below the Beltway through Rexton. Now you'll make good time from this point all the way in towards the city. So look, speeds are up as you scoot down towards North Avenue and then make your way as you transition into President Street. Another foggy look. These cars coming towards you. That is the inner loop as you work your way into Towson heading out towards Parkville as you work your way along the outer loop. That is Friday quiet as you head from Pikesville into Catonsville. That's your time saver traffic. Megan, back to you. All right, Liz, thank you. Well, coming up in our next half hour, this year's midterm elections are coming up this year. We're going to take a look at some of the top races. And if you like to dress up your pets, well, there's an event coming up where you can do just that. And it benefits a local animal shelter. We'll tell you all the details coming up. Subscribe to WMAR2 News on YouTube for daily videos. Welcome back. It is 625 and this year the Baltimore Humane Society is bringing back one of its most popular events and it's probably one of the area's only black tie events where guests are encouraged to bring their pets. The Black Tie and Tails Gala is going to feature a seated dinner, open bar, music and a silent auction and more importantly a pet Fashion show. This year's event is being held on Friday, May 6th from 630 to 1030 at the Grand Lodge in Hunt Valley. Tickets start at $150 and can be found on the Baltimore Humane Society website. It's always a fun time at that event. Well, the Orioles are playing their first spring training game today. They're going to be playing the Toronto Blue Jays at Ed Smith Stadium in Sarasota, Florida. First pitch is set for 105 this afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. Meantime, Camden Yards is lifting one restriction that was put in place during the pand pandemic. <clears throat> Excuse me. This season, you can once again bring in your own food and non-alcoholic beverages. It must be contained in a clear plastic one gallon bag. Only one bag is allowed per guest and sealed drinks can be no larger than 20 ounces. The Orioles home opener is Monday, April 11th against Milwaukee. Well, coming up in our next half hour, March Madness is underway. There's only one local team in the tournament this year. They tip off later today. We'll have a preview of their game coming up at 645. And we do have plenty of sunshine on tap for today, but first we have to get rid of that fog. I'll have all the details in my super seven day forecast coming up on Good Morning Maryland. Emergency legislation to suspend the state's gas tax is getting closer to the governor's desk for his signature. We have a live report on when you can see lower prices at the pump. Plus. I'm Mark Roper at WMAR2 News. Getting a taste for some Maryland crab this season? Well, it could cost both restaurant owners and their customers, but Jimmy's Famous Seafood is doing to help its customers still enjoy their crab. Coming up. 
You're watching the station that's working for you. WMAR 2 News. Now, good morning, Maryland. It is 6.30 on this Friday morning. It's March 18th. Good morning, Maryland. I'm Megan Knight. Christian has the day off. Chief Meteorologist Lynette Charles is joining me for her super seven day forecast. And man, oh man, it is foggy out there. In fact, before we get to you, yes. Lynette, let's go to the school delays because we do have quite a few of them this morning, all because of the fog. We're talking about Cecil and Talbot County Public Schools. They're going to be opening two hours late today because of the fog. Now, Talbot County Schools, they were supposed to dismiss early, so now the students are going to go in two hours late but let out at their normal dismissal time. Kent and Queen Anne's County Public Schools, they'll be starting 90 minutes late today. Kent County Schools, they were set to dismiss early today as well, so their times are just being delayed by 30 minutes. You can find all the school delays this morning by scanning that QR code right there on your screen, which will take you right to the list of closings at WMAR2news.com, and we're also going to put them up at the bottom of the screen right there. So, yeah, so four school delays mm -hmm. this morning, all because of that fog. Exactly. I mean, it just put a wrench in everything this morning. Really we did. did have the dense fog advisories really west of the bay earlier, but now they're everywhere and that's where we're dealing with it now and we're going to continue to monitor it as we go through the morning hours and the good news is though is that slowly but surely it will get out of here. We're going to be left with plenty of sunshine across the area for today and boy is that sunshine and that southerly flow going to warm the temperatures up once again. So before it's all said and done, we're talking a temperature of about 74 degrees and I really wouldn't be surprised if we went a little bit higher than that. So if you're going to be headed out to the Cassidy Pope concert this evening at the Baltimore soundstage, things look good. It will be a little bit breezy as we go towards the 8 o'clock time frame. 9 o'clock temperature is going to stay above average through the rest of today. As we head towards Saturday, this one things get a little bit bumpy, but at least those temperatures will be uh, 76 degrees, quite warm ahead of that front. We are expecting some severe weather. Storm Prediction Center does have us in that marginal risk. So we look at uh, what we're going to be getting. Tornado, very low chance for that, but there is a chance. It should stay mainly to the south of us, maybe mainly around Virginia if that does happen, but there still is a chance that it could occur in Maryland, so just be prepared for that. Uh, hail and wind will be the primary threats, though, so keep your eye to the sky on Saturday. It is going to be a weather alert day, and then we head towards Sunday. We all know what Sunday is, right? On the count of three, we're all going to say it. One, two, three. Spring. Spring. Yes, 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 exactly. As we go through the rest of your Sunday, things looking good. That high temperature will be about 61 degrees, still above average. We will see a mix of sun and clouds, and then temperatures are gorgeous day on Monday with numbers right around 70 degrees. Liz? Lynette, thanks so much. You got the countdown to spring, but this morning you're driving through the fog. So you'll find speeds down in spots, especially where visibility is reduced. So here is where we're seeing some congestion for those of you bound below town. Southbound on the BW Parkway, it's a slow trip. Heading below 100 and towards 32. 95 is the better bet, though in my opinion, 95 is almost always the better bet. Now, let's take you through the fog so you can really get a glimpse of it. These cars heading away from you, that's actually northbound, but you can see just how soupy it really is. Bringing you into town, there's some unexpected road work. It's of the impromptu variety. It's on inbound 295 as you head towards 95. It's on the right side of the ramp. As for the Beltway, it's quiet so far on the Antelope from Pikesville, zooming your way into Catonsville. Megan, let's send things back to you. All right, Liz, thank you. Lawmakers are working to suspend normal trade relations with Russia. The House approved a bill to revoke the status of both Russia and Belarus as normal trading partners. That would open the door to more tariffs on goods from those countries. That bill is now heading to the Senate. U.S. Secretary Antony Blinken says that he does agree with President Biden that Russian President Vladimir Putin is committing war crimes by targeting civilians and non-military buildings. At least 21 people were killed when Russian artillery destroyed a school and a community center near Kharkiv. The World Health Organization has verified 43 attacks on hospitals and health care facilities in Ukraine. And the impact of the war in Ukraine certainly being felt around the world, and that includes at the gas pump. Some good news this morning, though, is gas prices are continuing to drop slightly. AAA is reporting the national average is at $4.27, down from one cent from yesterday. Here in Maryland, the average cost of a gallon of regular gas is now at $4.16, which is a 14 cent drop from a week ago, but it's still 60 cents more than what we were paying last month. Meantime, in Annapolis, state lawmakers are getting closer to enacting a 30 day suspension of the Maryland gas tax, which would hopefully save money at the pump. WMAR2 News' is Aaron McPherson is live in Towson this morning. So, Aaron, do we have any idea on when this bill could actually go into effect? 
Well, it's expected that it could potentially go into effect as early as today. Lawmakers originally wanted this to be done by the end of the week, so we are here. It is Friday. It is the end of the week. House and Senate unanimously passed this bill. Now it just needs that governor's signature to move forward. But state lawmakers do still have to do a little bit more before the governor can sign it. Both the House and the Senate still have to sign off on each other's versions of the bill before it can move on. Now, lawmakers were back and forth about when the bill will actually go in to effect, wondering if there should be a couple day grace period to make sure there's equity among businesses and no perception of price gouging as gas stations lower their per gallon cost. But the expectation as of right now is that drivers will see the state gas tax suspension as soon as the governor signs the bill and it will be in place for 30 days. If we have sufficient enough budget surpluses from the Comptroller's office, perhaps there will be an opportunity for us to extend that for a little bit more time. Uh, so we don't know that just yet. Uh, but this 30 day provides a great opportunity from that standpoint and us to be able to evaluate going forward. Now, some lawmakers wanted 60 day relief, others 90 days to get us through Memorial Day. And Governor Hogan just wanted to be longer than 30 days. So he is hopeful that there could potentially be an extension if the budget does allow for it. Now, today, the governor is expected to see that bill on his desk. Now, as soon as we learn exactly when that will be, we'll be sure to let you know. For now, we're live here in Towson. Aaron McPherson, WMAR 2 News. All right, yeah, definitely be keeping an eye on that. Thank you, Aaron. Well, inflation is impacting Maryland's favorite seafood. The price of crab meat is expected to go up this season, and that is forcing restaurant owners to have to make some changes to their menus. WMAR 2 News Mark Rober is live outside of Jimmy Seafood in southeast Baltimore. So, Mark, how is Jimmy's going to manage these higher costs? Good morning, Megan. You know, just like the rest of us, a lot of people are making adjustments to their spending habits to save money. So the people here at Jimmy's Famous Seafood, they're doing the same, looking to make deals with their vendors to save some money, as well as making some changes to the menu so that they can offer a variety of things to choose from to make sure customers still get their crab no matter what the market price is. Now, people come to Jimmy's all over to enjoy the seafood here, but the wholesale, wholesale price of crab is expected to go up this year. But unlike other products impacted directly by inflation, there are additional factors which could affect the cost of crab. The Chesapeake Bay Seafood Industries Association blames a labor shortage of about 500 to 600 crab pickers because of a limit on H-2B visas. The exports warn without those workers, it could cause a 90% drop in production and a big jump in price this crab season. Jimmy's famous seafood owner John Menadaka says both he and his customers might be making some adjustments as the market price of crab goes up. So... If you only have 20 bucks to spend on lunch, you know, we make a uh, crab cake slider, for example, instead of, you know, the full crab cake, you know, we lower prices of certain alcohols to, so you're still, if you have 30 bucks for lunch, you're still going to be able to have what you want to have. It's just part of the game, uh, you know, and, you know, today it's crab meat, next week it'll be lobster, and the week after that it'll be beer bottles, you never know, but, you know, you just got to survive and adapt. Now, Maryland is the center of crab production in the mid-Atlantic area, but the worker shortage is expected to affect the crab industry up and down the East Coast. Pretty live in Southeast Baltimore, Mark Roper, WMAR 2 News. All right, Mark, thank you very much. Well, we are quickly approaching this year's midterm election. Some people in our area, though, not happy with how maps are being redrawn in their legislative districts. We'll have more on that story coming up. Plus, a potential shift on the national level. We look at the issues voters care about the most right now and how will President Biden and former President Trump impact those races. That's all coming up on Good Morning Maryland. It is 640 right now, and with just a few months until the 2022 midterms, this year's elections look like they could be the most critical in recent memory. Democrats are trying to maintain an advantage in both chambers of Congress, while Republicans know that winning a handful of seats could help them block future legislation from President Biden. ABC's Karen Travers has that story this morning. With the midterm elections less than eight months away, President Biden and Democrats are fighting to keep their slim majority in the House and Senate. This off-year election, in my view, may be the most important off-year election in modern history. The president acknowledging his domestic agenda is on the line. We know the fundamental change that shifts if we lose the House and Senate. The only thing I'll have then is a veto pen. 
The midterms could be a major test of voter approval of President Biden and the strength of former President Trump's influence within the Republican Party. There are key Senate races in Pennsylvania, Ohio, North Carolina, Georgia and Arizona, and highly anticipated governor's races in Georgia and Michigan. Republicans need to pick up just one seat to take control of the Senate and six seats to take over the House. History is not on President Biden's side. Typically, the party in power in the White House loses seats in a midterm election. Two big issues this year, the economy and inflation. Jobs numbers have been strong, but the fact is that uh, the cost of living has gone up for Americans across the country. Look for Republicans to also highlight parental rights in schools, an issue that gained steam during debates about COVID closures and masking, critical race theory, and teaching about LGBTQ issues. GOP leaders also say this will be a referendum on the president and his party. This midterm election will be a report card on the performance of this entire Democratic government, the president, the House, and the Senate. But Democrats say they'll run on that record, pointing to the COVID relief plan and the bipartisan infrastructure law and how they help communities and families. It's rare to see foreign policy dominate a domestic election, but 2022 could be an exception if the war in Ukraine continues. People are feeling the costs of this war as we speak. And if it means higher gas prices, uh, more inflationary pressures, more disruptions in the markets, that is a very bad thing for the party in power. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. Well, this morning there's going to be a news conference held by voters and organizations like the NAACP that are calling on the Baltimore County Council to redraw the county's legislative map once again. Earlier this month, the council redrew the map after a federal judge ruled that its first version violated the Voting Rights Act. Opponents say that the new map is very similar to the first one and still does not allow minority populations to elect their chosen candidates. The county has extended the deadline for candidates to file to run for office until next Tuesday. Well, a Baltimore native and Hollywood legend is receiving a major honor for his work. Well, that story up next. And Chipotle is bringing some technology into the kitchen. What details on this aptly named assistant and when we could see him in our area. Time now is 644. It is 645 and spring is officially starting this weekend in Annapolis. They're ushering the season by burning their socks. The Annapolis Maritime Museum's oyster roast and sock burning event is back. It's happening tomorrow from noon until four at the Annapolis Maritime Museum. WMAR2 News is Jamie Costello. He's going to be there burning some socks and emceeing the event. This is a tradition that dates back to the 1970s when people would burn their winter socks to welcome in spring and also boat shoes with no socks. They even do a poem reading called Burn Your Socks. All of the money raised will go to the Annapolis Maritime Museum. It's a big, fun event. Gotta go if you can. Legendary film director and Baltimore native John Waters is adding another one of his films to the Criterion Collection. Yesterday marked 50 years since the release of his cult classic Pink Flamingos. The Criterion Collection focuses on restoring and distributing important classic and modern films. Last year, the Library of Congress added Pink Flamingos to the National Film Registry. The remastered version of the film will be released on June 28th. You can buy a copy for $39.95. We have information on our website right now. And today is the first round of the women's college basketball tournament. The University of Maryland women, they are a four seed in the Spokane region. And they're also the only team from our area, men's or women's, left in the tournament because uh, Mount St. Mary's women lost yesterday. Maryland hopes to kickstart a deep tournament run when they take on Delaware. That game is scheduled for 5 o'clock tonight, so we wish them the best of luck. And Coors Light, trying to help out fans who are feeling the pressure while sitting there watching to see if their brackets are going to get busted. They released a beer-flavored lollipop just for March Madness. They're called Chalolipops <laughs> and Coors Light said, I hope I said that right. Uh, they were inspired to release these by the theory that lollipops could have a calming effect in a very emotionally charged situations. Uh, they don't actually contain any alcohol, by the way, but they have a frothy foam top similar to drinking a beer from a pint. Uh, they're available online through the end of the NCAA tournament. I know a lot of people were like, Megan Knight, you could have led with the fact that yeah. they don't. <laughs> right. Yeah, why are you bearing the lead there here? <laughs> don't contain alcohol. I'm very, very sorry. But uh, look what's behind us here. This beautiful sunrise shot of yeah. the Inner Harbor there. But don't let that exactly. fool you because it is very foggy out this morning. That's why Lynette's here. But first, 
We want to tell you about some school delays because of the fog, which you can find by scanning the QR code right there on your screen. That'll take you to the full list on our website right now. So we have Cecil and Talbot County Schools. They're opening two hours late today because of fog. Talbot County Schools, they were supposed to dismiss early, so now students get to go in late, but they're going to be out at their normal uh, dismissal time. I know. We're sorry. Uh, Kent and Queen Anne's County Public Schools, they'll start 90 minutes late today. Kent County Schools, they are also set to dismiss early today as well, so those times are just being pushed back by 30 minutes. So you can see those delays at the bottom of your screen. Scan that QR code, it'll take you there. But either way, Lynette has been very busy this morning yes. because of that fog. Yeah, the fog, dense fog advisory. When I was driving in this morning, I was like, oh, this is not going to be good this morning. Yeah, I could yeah. barely see in front of me. Exactly. So we have to watch that this morning. And we're also going to watch uh, some big changes as the day goes on, Megan Knight, though. So that's good news. It's not like the fog's going to stick around all day long. It will begin to burn off. But before that happens, we do have plenty of zeros on the map. This is when you never want to see the zeros when we're talking about visibility, because that is not good in Essex, Chestertown. We're seeing this around Easton this morning around Annapolis. So slowly but surely the fog will burn off and we get rid of the dense fog advisories as we go into about 10 o'clock. These linger until 10 o'clock this morning and really at this point it's for our entire viewing area and that's why we have been seeing those school delays on the eastern shore this morning. The satellite and radar is nice and calm and we're going to stay that way as we go throughout the day. It is going to be another gorgeous day. So yesterday wasn't gorgeous. We had the rain out there, but we needed the rain. So yesterday was more beneficial. So so we had the liquid sunshine yesterday. We had the actual sunshine the day before that, and that actual sunshine will be back for today as well. If you're doing some traveling up to the north and east, uh, you're good there in terms of the weather and down off towards the south pretty good as well. You have to go uh, all the way back off towards the west. You can see what's happening here. This big system, this is going to be moving in our direction as we continue through the rest of today. So by this evening, it's getting closer and closer, and then by tomorrow it will trek through. But look what happens when you are in that warm sector. So and that's where we are in the warm sector. You do have that potential for some showers and thunderstorms. And as we move into your tomorrow, that's exactly what we will have. So we do have temperatures ahead of that cold front above average this morning, this afternoon. So we're at uh, 39 degrees in Manchester, 42 in Ellicott City this morning, 49 over in Centerville. Easton's in the upper 40s, mid 40s around Annapolis and also Stevensville. So take this into consideration. So you see 45 degrees right now in Annapolis. Now I'm going to show you the dew points, the dew points, the measure of the moisture in the atmosphere. You hear this a lot when we're going to summertime. As we look at the dew point now, 44 degrees. Remember the temperature was actually 45 in Annapolis. When the dew points and the temperatures are close together or the exact same, that's when you deal with that fog. You're dealing with saturated atmosphere out there, and that's exactly what's happening this morning. The temperatures and the dew points are very close together or the exact same, and that's why we're dealing with that patchy dense fog. As we go into your tomorrow morning, we will have the potential for a few spotty showers prefrontal showers as we go into the afternoon evening time frame. We'll get closer to that cold front moving through and we do have the potential for some strong and severe thunderstorms. Storm Prediction Center does have us in a marginal risk. So on a scale of one to five, we are in a one. And if this comes to fruition, the primary threats will be damaging gusty winds, possibly some small hail. And I can't rule out an isolated tornado, but that should stay mainly to the south of us. So just stay weather aware and look at this little girl. Yes, Mildred sent in by Nancy Will Hoyt and you've seen pictures from um, Buster um, and the they also have another dog as well. But Mildred does not like the rain yesterday. She was not happy. Hopefully she'll be happy today because it's going to be a great dog walking forecast as that temperature soars to about 74. Liz, it was a struggle walking my dog yesterday. He kept sitting down more than he walked this morning. The fog is the issue. You can see it there off in the uh, distance. Right now I want to focus on the volume that fills in around the area. It's becoming more crowded. So here's the trip along the uh, outer loop. These cars heading away from you. That is the outer loop heading towards 40 in Catonsville. Now, here's a look as things get uh, aggressive, uh, not aggressively, but cr progressively more crowded along the outer loop heading out of uh, Parkville in towards Towson. And you're going to find that the commute wakes up 95 south as you come into the uh, 895 split in Rosedale. That's your time saver traffic. Megan, back to you. All right, Liz, thank you very much. The phrase computer chip might soon have a new meaning. Chipotle is testing an autonomous kitchen robot that can make its own tortilla chips. Officials with the restaurant chain say the mechanical assistant dubbed Chippy will allow human employees to focus on other food related jobs. Chippy is being taught how to cook chips with Chipotle's current recipe and it's being tested at the company's innovation hub in California. Later this year, it'll make its debut at a location in Southern California and then the results of those tests will determine if Chippy could be rolling out nationally. We'll see how he does. 
Coming up on Good Morning America, what better way to start the weekend than with the always entertaining Michael Buble. The four-time Grammy winner will be live in Times Square on where he's going to debut his new song, I'll Never Not Love You. That's all coming up on GMA, but we're going to wrap up Good Morning Maryland right after this. Just about 7 o'clock, it's 8.56. Time now to get one last check of your traffic and weather. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Lynette Charles. All right, Megan Knight, and we're going to start outside this morning. And no, this camera is not messed up. You're just looking at a lot of fog out there this morning. That sun will be rising at 13 minutes after 7, and you're still going to be dealing with that fog. So we have some dense fog around Dundalk this morning under that dense fog advisory until 10 o'clock. So you can see these numbers, zeros around Essex, Chestertown, uh, and also around Easton, only about a one mile visibility around the inner harbor this morning and also Stevensville. So just uh, really take it easy out there this morning. That uh, fog is thick in a lot of spots. The temperatures out the door above average, and that's the way we'll stay as we continue through the rest of today. But we will get plenty of sunshine in here as the day goes on and temperatures will be above average today and tomorrow. And Liz, we do have the potential for some strong, severe thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. Fog is the big deal this morning, Lynette. I will show you another glimpse of it. That Dundalk camera was uh, amazing, but here's the soup you're driving through. Through the cars heading away from you are southbound on the Harrisburg away from Timonium and uh, connecting to the Beltway. As we take you along the uh, Harrisburg southbound, you should be making good time from Shawan connecting to 695. Here is the top side of the Beltway. Those cars heading away from you are the uh, outer loop out of Towson and into Parkville. All right, yeah, very foggy out there this morning. And before we go, we just want to say, because a lot of you have been asking about Lauren Cook, if she's going to be coming back to Good Morning Maryland, just want to let you know she decided she's going to stay home with her two beautiful daughters, Charlotte and Madeline. Madeline, by the way, is doing very well. Charlotte loves being a big sister. So we're very happy for Lauren, yes. but we're also sad that she's not going to come in here every yeah. morning at WMAR. So we wish her the best yes, of luck. And uh, we'll leave you with this beautiful sunrise shot. Have Bye a good Lauren. one. Bye, Lauren. Bye, Lauren. W